In this lesson, I'm going to go over how to prepare models to do clot simulation. So this is the first in a series of lessons where I'll go in depth on doing clot simulation in Maya using NCloth. So I have my low res simulation geometry and I have a collision object for the character. So the first thing that I can do is to create a few shaders just so that it's easy to visually know which objects are simulation objects at cloth and which objects are for colliding with. So I'll just make the body brown because we're going to have a lot of objects in this scene that have similar shapes and so by assigning different shader colors we'll be able to recognize what each one is just by looking at them in the viewport. So we'll assign that simple Lambert shader. So in this case, I had a separate head for facial animation. So I don't really need that for cloth simulation purposes, so I'm just going to delete that. And I also don't need the eyes, but I'll just keep those eye lenses for now, just as a visual aid, just to so it doesn't look so creepy. So the idea is that you do your animation in a separate file, you do your rendering in a separate file, and so you run your simulations in a separate file as well. So in this file, we don't have a skeleton or any skinning. I've just brought in the character model. So now I want to create a body that I can collide with, something that will be simpler than this. Now in this case, this character's body is pretty simple already, but if you had a higher resolution character, it would be a good idea to do this workflow where I exported an OBJ. And after exporting the OBJ file, I'm going to load it in ZBrush. There are other ways you can retopologize a model and, and create a low res model that way, but ZBrush has some really excellent tools where it's just a few button clicks to create a really good model for uh, collision purposes for clot simulation. This is also great for hair simulation as well. So I just imported my model, clicked on edit, and I can rotate around. So you can do this even if you don't really know ZBrush well. Let's go into Subtool and Duplicate. So now I have a copy of the model. And just so I can keep things organized, I'll rename one of these copies Body Collision. And then I'll click on the eye for the other one so that it's not visible, just like layers in Photoshop. So I have my Body Collision selected and then I'm going to click on DynaMesh under Geometry. So that created a nice airtight model. So the holes for the eyes have been closed. So this is also really great if you have multiple objects, like a character with armor and stuff, and maybe they have a cape on top. So instead of colliding with all that armor, you can combine all of them using DynaMesh and then ZRemesher after that to get a decent topology. And so if you find you're losing details in like the fingers and things like that, you can always adjust your settings. So I find that if you are losing detail, 
a good way to retain it is to increase the resolution when you create your DynaMesh. And then you can always go lower when you use ZRemesher and you can click on the button under ZRemesher that says half. And after you get a resolution you like, you can project all with the other layer visible, but your low res version still selected. You click project all and it'll try to match the shape. So now we have a low res model. So I've left the fingers kind of mangled looking over here because I'm going to show you another way that you can fix it if you don't want to keep fingers. If you want to create like a mitten for it to collide with. So I brought it back, I brought that low res model back into Maya. And I'm just going to name it body collision. So now you can see it's it's a reasonably good topology, at least good enough for simulation purposes, but the hands are all mangled. So one way I could have fixed this is by increasing the DynaMesh resolution to say like 512 and then using ZRemesher to reduce it. The way I'm going to do it here though, just to show you another way, is to select those edge loops, convert it to a face selection, and then delete those uh, faces and then you can start extruding using poly extrude. Now you'll notice if you start pulling your extrude out it will get very messy. So instead what I do is I create an extrude, a very small extrude, and then I'll take that edge loop and translate it out further. It gives me a cleaner result. So this is another way. You don't have to collide with the whole hand in most situations. And so to prevent cloth from getting caught on small details like fingers, you can create a collision object that is just a mitt. And in most cases, that's more than good enough. So basically, you want a collision object that approximates the shape of your actual character so that your cloth can collide with it but you want it to be a bit lower res so we're going to delete the history so by having it be a bit lower res you can have faster simulations so now I'm going to do a mesh cleanup and check for non-manifold geometry. Delete the history. And so since this model just came out of ZBrush, it doesn't really have any useful UVs. And so it's very important to have good UVs, so we're just going to do automatic UVs. You can see that it laid them out like that. And so then I'll click on layout, or maybe you can do unfold, and then layout. Okay, so now we have some quick UVs. So this wouldn't be very good for painting textures, but it's perfect for cloth simulation. So all of your collision and cloth objects need to have good UVs. And so this is an easy way to create them. So a lot of the steps I'm going over in this lesson are kind of the steps that you won't see in most lessons. And by not doing these steps properly, you'll run into a lot of issues later on that are hard to figure out. So very similar to hair in this way like the series of XGen lessons I went over and created in my YouTube channel. Okay, so now we're going to go to the Hypershade. And can create some more shaders. We'll delete the unused ones. 
just to keep things a bit organized. And we'll create another Lambert. So I'm going to create a red material for collision objects. And we'll just assign that to the collision body that we created in ZBrush. And I'm just going to soften the edges. So mesh display, soften edges, just kind of smoothing the normals. Or rather, smoothing, like creating smooth groups for smoother shading. So in this case, I created pretty low res objects for the clothing. If you have high res objects, you can make copies of them and delete extra edge loops and things like that to reduce their detail. If there's thickness in the sleeves and collar and things like that, you can remove that. You can remove buttons and any extra details that you don't need. So here I just created a copy of these objects because they're already low res. And I'm going to create green Lambert shaders to apply to them so then I'll know visually that all of these green objects are cloth and the red objects are collision objects. And so another thing that helps is if you give each simulation object a different shade of green then you can tell when objects are intersecting each other. So a lot of this is kind of boring, tedious, but the point is just to keep things organized and clean because cloth, much like hair simulation, is very finicky and you'll run into a lot of problems if everything isn't set up properly and everything isn't prepared cleanly. Like I can't emphasize enough you know, how much time you save by you know, taking these few simple steps. So we'll create another shade of green. And this is just so we can tell when these objects, if they're intersecting each other after the simulation, it'll be easy to kind of see that we have to clean up those areas. So in these objects too, we want to make sure that we have good UVs. And so again, you know, clicking modify unfold just kind of stretches them out a little better. And then clicking layout just kind of helps fill the space if you want to use that. And so it gave me an error about non-manifold UVs. So I'm just running the mesh cleanup on it. And if we go back, I can actually select both those objects. Click on Unfold. And Layout. So that just kind of packed everything in nicely. So again, this sort of automatic way of doing UVs is great for cloth simulation, but not really so great if you're going to try to paint textures on this. So now I'm just going to organize these objects into groups. So you have your sim geometry under one group and collision geometry. And I don't really need those eyes, so I'm going to delete them. And so these objects are the original objects, and I'll just call that AnimGeo. So I would bring in animation onto these objects using point caches. So the next step is to create wrap deformers where I'm going to wrap like the sim object for the shirt to the animation object of the shirt. 
and then the pants simulation object to the animation pants and then for the collision body I can wrap that to the animation body so this way all of these objects are driven by the animation once it's loaded in and then the simulation is run on top of that and these are steps you want to do before you convert it to cloth. So just to test it out, I can put a cluster on the animation body, move it around, you know, make sure that everything's moving together the way it's supposed to. And then just delete the cluster after you're done testing it. And we'll just save the file. So that's our basic model prep. So the only other models we would need would be the render geometry. So let's make another copy of the original models and put that in another group. And we'll call this group cloth render and I'll just adjust the names so if you're working at a studio this is the geometry that you would create point caches for or pass off you know in whatever way your pipeline dictates to the next department point caches are good give you a lot of control so in this case I have very simple models for the clothes there's no thickness but and if you have more detailed clothing geometry, this is where the cloth render objects and the AnimGeo, these objects would match each other and they would have thickness. You'd put buttons and any other details that you need, like piping and stuff like that, pockets, all of that would be in these objects, not in your simulation geometry. And so these cloth render objects these are going to be wrapped to the simulation objects so that their movement is driven by the cloth simulation and so that is your basic setup prepared your models clean UVs uh, low resolution collision object and relatively lower resolution simulation objects so hope you like the lesson uh, feel free to ask questions in the comments i'll be following up with more in-depth lessons on ncloth and click subscribe thank you